Welcome to another ABC University training session. In this training session, we're going to cover Multiplex Training Part 1. Warning, before operating the multifunction display to perform simulations or function tests via the Multiplex system, warn people working on the vehicle that you're about to do so, because the climate control system fans and other devices may suddenly engage without the engine running. Never operate the multifunctional display while driving. Caution. Before carrying out electrical welding on the vehicle, first turn off the battery isolating switch and then remove the connectors from all electronic control units. Only use a multimeter as a testing device. Do not use a test light. Caution. Do not lengthen or shorten the CAN bus. The CAN bus is your basic computer connection between all your ECMs, ECUs, and modules. If you lengthen or shorten your CAN bus, you can actually corrupt the data that is actually being sent and confuse the computer system. Do not remove termination resistors. Removing termination resistors, you can actually get rid of the loop that the computer must make to actually communicate with every module. The electronics are very sensitive. Incorrect connections will lead to damage. Avoid reversing polarity connections. What is multiplexing? Multiplex is a collective term for technology used to transmit multiple signals through one single conductor between two or more components in an electronic network. Multiplexing is sending many signals over two wires at the same time and in two directions, like talking on a telephone. The advantages of a multiplex system in relation to classical electrical equipment include a considerable reduction of the number of wires, thinner main cable looms in the vehicle. Why multiplex? The fact that a wide variety of switching conditions can be readily built into a circuit ensures that the entire arrangement of electrical circuits are simplified. This leads to a reduction of the number of relays, simplification of the junction boxes, a reduction of the vehicle mass, which in turn equals reduced fuel consumption. The system provides access so that one or more diagnostic possibilities are available in the program, which in turn makes it easier to test a vehicle or trace faults. Testing can be done through an onboard diagnosis or by connecting an external PC. Onboard diagnosis provides the possibilities to troubleshoot without the use of special equipment. The multiplex system reduces the number of separate electronic circuits. Examples of reduced circuits include turn signal box, windshield wiper interval, and time switches. The multiplex system also reads messages that are available on the CAN bus of the driveline, or your SAE J1939. This communication advantage leads to a reduction of the number of wires and components in the driveline. And what system is installed on the Van Hole coaches? The Kibis 32 Multiplex System. Kibis is the abbreviation of Kienzel Board Electronic System, designed and developed by the Siemens Corporation. The system is constructed with hardware components, all equipment in the system. This hardware is controlled by the software, program which enables the hardware to function as required. The Kiva system consists of the following hardware components. First, you have your computer module, or your ZR, that contains the driver. In other words, the brain of the system. Then, you have your dashboard mode, or your DMUX, that contains programmable information. A number of nodes without programmable intelligence, just inputs and outputs. And then you have your CAN bus, which is the interconnection between the elements of the multiplex system. In this slide, we're going to show you just the basic layout of your multiplex system. Number one would be your computer module, or your ZR. Two would be your dashboard node, or your DMUX. Three would be all your nodes. Four is your vehicle engine control unit. Five is your transmission control unit, or your TCM. Six would be your ABS, or ASR control unit. 7 would be your door controls, and the letter R around would be your termination resistor.
the three major components of the multiplex system is your ZR, your nodes, and your DMUX. In this slide, we just show you a basic example on a C2045 component location. Number one would be node number one. Number two, your computer module or your ZR. Number three is your node four. Number four is your location for node five. Number five is the location for node six. Number six is your location for node three. Number seven is your location for node two. Number eight is your diagnostic socket. And number nine is your dashboard node. And in this slide, we show you the basic layout of your IB dashboard diagnostics for a C2045. And here we show you your front electrical box on a C2045 located at the EKV on a wire schematic. And this, we have your electrical box in the restroom in that back wall, which on electrical schematic would be your EKS. What is a ZR? It's the computer. The module contains the driver, the software that controls the system. The computer ZR module does not contain any repairable parts. The computer ZR module is programmed by the vehicle VIN and must be programmed by ABC companies. And what is a node? A node is an electronic switch box with inputs and outputs controlled by the computer module to operate the electrical functions of the vehicle. There are two types of inputs, static and analog. There are 24 inputs in total, 18 static inputs, six analog inputs. The outputs are protected against overloads and short circuits. You have a 32 total outputs. The outputs are protected against overloads and short circuits. They are not protected against any applied external voltage to the output. In this slide, we show you a picture of your node van hole part number at the top. All six nodes are identical and interchangeable inside the coach. The way the nodes actually work, the switching is by the wire addressing, by which way the wires are actually pinned in each connector. This is why each node is interchangeable. Are nodes interchangeable? All nodes are interchangeable, with the exception of the dashboard node, or your DMUX. This is because the nodes do not contain any software. The addressing takes place by the means of an external wire combination and a connector. Addressing ensures that the node recognizes the message that they are intended for. Note that nodes do not contain any usable repairable parts. A faulty unit must be replaced in whole. A node is an electronic switch box with inputs and outputs controlled by the computer module to operate the electrical functions of the vehicle. Again, there are two types of inputs, static and analog. There are 24 inputs, 18 static inputs, six analog inputs. The outputs are protected against overloads and short circuits, and you have a total of 32 outputs. All nodes are interchangeable. This is because the nodes do not contain software, and the addressing takes place by the means of an external wire combination and a connector plug. Addressing ensures that the node recognizes the message that are intended for it. Caution! The multiplex system must be reset after work has been carried out on the CAN bus. Turn the central emergency switch off. Wait for 30 seconds. And in this slide, we show you the dashboard node, or the DMUX. This is the backside of your DMUX and how it is set up. And here we show you your dashboard node front, or the DMUX. Notice at the bottom, you have your first button, which is the menu button. The four buttons next to that are your selection buttons. And the very far button is your adjusting button for the dashboard instrument brightness. And what does a dashboard node do? The dashboard node receives information relating to the position of the switches on the dashboard and sends this information to the computer or ZR module. The DMUX module controls the multifunctional display and the warning and indicator lights on the dashboard, via the dashboard node. 
Next, we'll go over the difference between a DMUX versus a node. With the DMUX, you have lower output current ratings. The DMUX is integrated into the display screen. And the DMUX contains a program. The dashboard node does not contain any components that can be repaired by the user. If there is a fault, you have to replace it together with the instrument panel by a unit of the same Van Hole ordering number as the original. This ordering number relates not only to the dashboard hardware, but also to the dashboard node program. And what is a communication bus? A communication bus is an electrical conductor that transfers digital signals in both directions between the components in a multiplex system that span throughout the entire vehicle. There are different types of buses. A CAN bus is a type that has been defined in both ISO and SAE standard. CAN is the abbreviation for controller area network. Please look at the picture below to see the difference between your multiplex system, electronic control units, and the CAN bus backbone. You have your CAN high for the multiplex is a twisted wire pair which is blue and your CAN low is brown. For the ECU or electronic control units, you have a twin core shielded cable. CAN high would be brown and CAN low would be white. And then your CAN bus background is a twin core shielded cable which is yellow and green. Next we'll go over communication speed. The communication speed of a CAN bus depends on the protocol use. The computer module can communicate using different speeds and protocols via separate CAN bus lines. For the drive line, the SAE J1939 is a speed of 250 kilobytes per second. Examples would be communication between the control units of the engine, transmission, brakes, and ABS modules. On the ISX engine, Cummins uses its own CAN line for communication between their modules and is a much faster, approximately 500 kilobytes per second. The Cummins CAN line is not tied in with the J1939. Next we'll go over termination resistors. Each CAN bus is terminated at both ends with a 120 ohm resistor. The resistors are necessary to guarantee integrity of data transfer and network stability. If you look at the picture below, you can see your termination resistors in a CAN line. You will notice on each CAN line, you'll have two termination resistors, one in the beginning and one in the end. If you was to remove one of these termination resistors, it would cause havoc with that CAN line and the computer would not be able to communicate. Adding an extra resistor into the CAN line can actually cause more havoc into the system. You must have two termination resistors in each CAN line, one at the beginning and one at the end. The node and the Kibis systems are fitted with an internal termination resistor. If necessary, you can switch in the termination resistor simply by placing a wire bridge between pin 3 and 5 of the C connector, as shown below. Note, devices with permanent built-in resistors must be fitted at the start or the end of the CAN line. If you was to put an extra termination resistor in the middle of the CAN line, you will cut out whatever was behind that system. And this is going to conclude Multiplex Training Part 1, The Introduction of Multiplexing. After you finish this version, please go to the next training session, Multiplex Training Part 2. For questions regarding this webcast, please contact ABC's Technical Service Department at 877-427-7278. Listen for the prompts for coach technical support and select the appropriate option. Support is available at this number 24-7.